Yeah, thank you. Well, obviously, uh, I want to credit a, a fabulous UCLA team for this amazing season. Uh, we played them earlier. They beat us earlier. They beat us again, so we can do nothing but tip our hats to them. And uh, what they had, which we were certainly very impressed with, is uh, uh, they've got a lot of technical ability. They're athletic. And uh, it was just uh, it was a war for us to try to take them out. Uh, so nothing but credit for them and their wonderful student athletes. Uh, uh, so, uh, but I'm proud of my kids. Uh, we had a great year. Uh, I'm proud of the way we fought today. Uh, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, I'm excited for our future and uh, certainly proud uh, looking back on this season. <coughs> I wasn't close enough. I mean, uh, so I'm not going to speculate. Obviously, I've uh, DVR'd this. I will be looking. Um, uh, but right now, I, I can't speculate. I was, you know, 70 yards away from uh, whatever happened to Goldmouth, so I don't want to speculate on something I really didn't see that clearly. More questions from in the room or on Zoom in the back? Coach, um, what's the message to the girls after, you know, we're so close to immortality, so to speak, and have it kind of worked away from them like that? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can really say to assuage uh, their pain. Um, but, you know, this is what uh, uh, I guess the best parts of athletics are all about. I mean, you really get to feel uh, life in moments like that. And uh, what uh, Avery was trying to say is this is going to be very connective uh, for these players because they all uh, worked hard together all season. Uh, they got to uh, the final game. Uh, didn't work out for them, but as she says, I, I guess what the, the way they will look at this is, you know, you know, 16 seconds to glory, uh, and uh, you know what? That's an achievement. And uh, who knows? I mean, uh, if the referee hadn't stopped the clock as often as she did, uh, and we obviously have to speculate whether or not those stoppages were warranted, uh, if we were better able to sort of hold the ball a bit, uh, because. Basically, we're in sheer panic mode. Uh, that's the the incredible excitement of coaching amateurs. Uh, they're in you know full panic mode at the end. Um, and also, we uh, th that was probably our Achilles heel this year. We were pretty good at scoring goals, uh, pretty good at going up, and then pretty good at not holding on to the lead. Uh, I think even in the last game, weren't we up uh, three zip? Uh, and then, uh, you know, Florida State comes roaring back. So I think uh, uh, these are things, obviously, as a coaching staff, uh, we've got to look at to see if we can uh, figure out ways to hold on to our leads. But uh, I was excited about the way we played for the majority of the game and obviously uh, uh, incredibly disappointed uh, that we couldn't hang on. Uh, but um, these kids had a, a great season. Um, Avery Patterson I thought was phenomenal. That's 90 minutes of the whole left side, because when you play a 1-3-5-2, uh, the wing backs, the left and right midfielders in the five, play the whole sideline. And she played, what, 110 minutes, uh, the whole sideline, scored two goals in the back post. Uh, so I've got nothing but uh, respect and admiration for her and this team. The older I get, uh, <laughs> the more uh, I construct the letters to also um, address our culture. And so uh, I've tried to include, you know, more humor as I get older uh, in these letters. Uh, and I think uh, on several occasions, I think I was successful. Uh, but here's what uh, uh, I like about this tradition. Every one of those seniors knows uh, how much uh, I respect them and admire them and like them. Um, and hopefully it's something uh, they appreciate as well. Uh, so for me, uh, uh, it's an exhausting practice because I wrote 12 of those letters. Um, we read six out before the uh, uh, game against Florida State. We read six out before this game. And we sort of mixed up, you know, who was uh, going to be read for the first and the second game. Uh, but it's our tradition, uh, and it's a tradition of connection. And our incentive in the NCAA tournament is to send every senior out a winner. And so uh, we didn't succeed, uh, but I think uh, we gave it a good shot. Second row there. Trying to ignore the uh, score line, which is the biggest thing you remember and take away about these group of women? That uh, 
and I have to give Damon Nahas full credit. I mean, I'm an old man. He's doing most of the heavy lifting. And he took a team that basically lost two All-Americans, and he took it to the national championship game. When you lose a player like uh, Macy Bell, who has the potential to play on the U.S. full national team, and Sam Meza, who in my opinion has similar potential, and yet that team still makes the national championship game, uh, that's a credit to uh, uh, this guy that I think is a coaching genius. Uh, and it was so funny, you know, he was apologizing to me after the game, and I was thinking, this is ridiculous. I don't think another team in the country could have lost two All-Americans and gotten this far. And I give him nothing but full credit and the kids that uh, uh, he basically took to this level. Uh, so I'm very proud of this season. Uh, I'm very proud of having a staff, you know, like Damon Nahas. Uh, Nathan Thackeray um, is one of the best goalkeeper coaches uh, I've ever seen. It's entertaining watching him work. Heather O'Reilly, I mean, to have a player of her caliber, possibly one of the 10 greatest players in U.S. women's soccer history, serve as your volunteer assistant. I mean, uh, my staff is extraordinary, and I've really enjoyed this season. And uh, I was joking with my athletic director after we won on, on Friday, and he was asking me, you know, how I could stay so calm during all of these games. I said, you know, Bubba, we lost our two best players. We're in the College Cup. We've won the uh, first, you know, semifinal game. Uh, I'm playing with house money. So uh, this is, in my opinion, overachievement uh, for us in a, in a very good way, even though our tradition has to make it pretend like, you know, well, we should have won the national championship. No, this team uh, overachieved in every respect, and I'm very proud of them and my staff. Time for one more. Answer, how did the game shift? What changed after you went up to nothing? What were they doing to turn things around? First of all, obviously, uh, when you get up to, you have a tendency as a team to be more conservative, which is logical. I mean, that's exactly the way they should react. Uh, what also happens is the other team is now ignited because they, they know they have to get in it. Uh, and then what started to set in for us, and this wasn't the first game where this set in, is we started to panic a bit. So basically, rather than you know, trap a, pa a ball and then pass it to an open uh, Tar Heel, we're clearing balls out when there's no pressure on the ball. And I'm not saying we did that every single time, but uh, we're just in this sort of you know, hyper, you know, terrified uh, lack of composure mode. And so, uh, um, and obviously, uh, uh, we've got some kids in the field that are young, um, and it's harder for them in these environments. But I think, uh, uh, I think that sort of panic is what made it difficult for us to uh, hold on to that lead. And uh, it sort of uh, excited UCLA, because rather than passing balls and keeping possession like we did so effectively in the first half, we started just trying to bang it out. Uh, and uh, it, that just is not the way to try to manage a lead.